Everyone, hi. Once again, Bruce Muffs and LCSW from Sunridge of Nevada coming at you with some more video breakdowns. Okay, sad day today. Uh, we are going to commemorate uh, Juice World and by breaking down two of his songs because, as everyone, of course, knows, he passed away almost a month ago. All right. Um, why did he pass away? Overdose of pain pills, and he was 21 years old, and a tremendous talent, and just an incredibly gifted young man, and in so many, so many ways, super talented, and super talented artist, and like almost everyone else we have covered, he didn't have his own genre. <laughs> he created his own. That's what was. How did they define him among a million different ways? Was hip hop, rap, emo rap which seems to be really big today, R&B, SoundCloud rap, and alternative R&B. So he had like six or seven just titles, which, and he was more, well, that and well more. Uh, like I said in my next line, but in fact, he was so much more. Um, he came from a rough childhood, and I'm going to go with his real name, Jared, because there's no point in calling him Juice World anymore out of respect. Um, his parents divorced when he was three years old, and leaving his mother to raise him and a younger brother alone, and even as a child, adolescent, he was a heavy drug user during his childhood years, and he began drinking lean in the sixth grade and using Percocets and Xanax uh, by 2013. He also smoked cigarettes so heavily that he quit in his last year in high school due to health issues. The two songs you can see behind me we want to cover are Legend and Legends and Rich and Blind because we feel it shows... I feel it shows where he was at emotionally and mentally, and that he was dropping clues throughout both songs on how he was really thinking. Okay, so here we go, go running into the song. The first song I'm going to break down is Rich and Blind. It's from the album, of course, the EP Too Soon. Now, what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to explain. I I'm not going to cover every line. I want to go over specific lyrics. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say these are the lyrics I want to cover, and then I'm going to give you my analysis clinically of the breakdown that I see. So I'm going to do the lines, and I'm going to do the breakdown clinically. So here we go. Just the name of the song, Rich and Blind, tells you what you can expect. And I am always taken aback, and I was showing this to my producer, that no one seems to take the lyrics seriously as a cry for help. You know, listen to me. You know, like I... Like I've said, and I said this before with a couple other artists, if I was their clinician and I heard these lyrics and I said, Bruce, what do you think of them? I'd say, uh, Jared, you're being admitted for an observation because these lyrics are very eerie and dark. And I know that was a lot of his theme in a lot of ways, but they would be a major, major concern to me clinically, just alone. All right. Now, I, there's no videos for either song, but Contigo Music did a video tribute to him, and they were dead on in how they portrayed the song and using, you know, footage of him. Here we go. I'm going to read now the first chorus. Say they want to read my mind. They really want to read my mind. Telling you right now all you find is a lost soul, rich and blind. He had a very good voice, too, by the way. They say they want to read my mind. You really want to read my mind. I promise all that you will find is a lost soul, rich and blind. There's a scene there where they show him on his own memorial, which is kind of eerie because like, he's portraying being at a memorial. But you realize like that really was going to be his memorial, in a way, all across the country. People put up these memorials for him. So kind of eerie how they put that together, like almost foreboding what, you know, almost foreboding himself, his own death. And you want to see my state of mind? You want to see my state of mind? Come right in and all you will see is someone, me, 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 I'm lost. Yeah, me, you'll see my state of mind. You'll see me and I'm lost. Yeah, I'm rich, but I am walking blindly. I don't know where I'm going. And the next verse one goes, I know I have a purpose, but I don't see the purpose. What a great line. They tell me, they, they, who is they? I have a purpose. Who? Who's telling me he has a purpose? His fans, his management team, his so-called friends. To me, he had no direction or point of contact. Didn't have anything. And then going down, they tell me the death of me going to be the Percy's, the Perks. We know that's referring, of course, to Percocets. I know they lace pills. I bought them on purpose. Life's unreal when death's uncertain. It's funny how the blessed ones had the most curses 
Heart falling to the floor if you lost if you lose another person. Take three more, I swear it's worth it, but it ain't no world tour if I'm laying in a hearse. Okay. And what he's saying is, you know, I can only see comfort in drug usage. When he's talking about the Percocets, and that's what led to the seizure, take people at their word. We say this all the time. I do this in, you know, in clinical analysis. Like, if you say it, you mean it. People say, well, I'm just joking. I'm joking about being suicidal, joking about killing myself, joking about having a drug overdose, joking about getting into a fight, joking about hitting my wife. No, because if you say it, if you didn't mean it, you wouldn't say it. I don't say I'm going to beat up my wife. I'm going to beat up my kids. I'm going to go get into a car accident. I'm going to jump off a bridge. <laughs> That's just Bruce. He's crazy. No, you take it seriously. Listen to what the person is saying, okay? This is how he is really feeling, all right? And it's interesting, too. He goes, it's funny in the, in the verse one, it's funny how the blessed ones had the most curses, which I took as, why am I not making it? I have everything but the two biggest things I need in life, self-worth and self-confidence. And then it goes, but it ain't no world tour if I'm laying in a hearse. Think about this. Every musician's fantasy is to say you're part of a world tour and you're headlining a world tour. You've truly made it, okay? And it still did not change how unhappy he was how he felt about himself, and how he saw his future. World tour. He was part of one. He was supposed to have his own. And yet he was so unhappy, even that didn't get him going. Said. Then there's the chorus part. Said they want to read my mind. They really want to read my mind. He's like, he's saying these lines over and over again. Telling you right now, all you find is a lost soul, rich and blind. They said they want to read my mind. Do you really want to read my mind? I promise all that you'll find is a lost soul, rich and blind. For all of his success, Jared really got no pleasure out of any of the things that fame is supposed to bring. Nor the money. You know, he got all this money, but he wasn't happy. He does a great job showing the emptiness and the, and the expression that comes to mind for me is running on empty. When you see him in, the, in that video, he looked drained and exhausted, like just... Like there's no color to him. He, it, yeah, it's exhausting being unhappy. It's miserable. And the way he was coping was by taking increasing amounts of drugs. And, you know, I'm a lot, you know, the next, the post chorus is a lost soul, rich and blind, 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 blind. What I'm breaking down from that is he wants you to get it. He, wa he wants you to get it because he wants to get it. I'm blind. Don't you see where I'm at? Can you see where I'm coming from? Can you extend the hand? I'm lost. I'm blind. I'm blind. I'm blind. When someone is honing in on a topic again and again and again, you got to focus. When I, do, when I do analysis, when I do clinical stuff, I let the person talk. And when I see things that are repeated over and over and over again, that's what's important to them. Because if it's not, they don't bring it up. Now, verse 2. This is dedicated to you if you felt the lowest of the low. I know how it feels. You don't want to struggle anymore. The great two lines. And the breakdown from that, what struck me is that he had a tremendous ability to relate to his fans and open himself up to the struggles they were facing as he dealt with the same ones in his own life. Very few performers have that knack of like clicking into the, to the, to the audience. And when I watched him in concert, he had a very a, a, a unique knack for doing so. It made him relatable and why his music reached so many fans. Because I, I can imagine how the average fan felt who watched him, you know, seeing him as Juice World. His music is my life. There's a connection there, which is very, very powerful. And even great artists often struggle with, like, am I reaching the audience? Okay. Then he goes like this. Going a few lines down, it goes, um, uh, smoking loud pack, which is slang for marijuana. What you say I can't hear, but I still hear the fallen ones in my ears. Now, in the video, he was praying into a circle of chairs, 
which screams out NA meeting, AA meeting. You know, there's some kind of meeting going on. And then his, then you actually have a scene where he's sitting with his back to you and you have people, you know, in the room, classic, you know, NA, AA setup. And, and I could, and I could, I didn't see his face, but my God, I've been enough of those meetings, you know, as an observer and a participant, you know, like running the group where you're trying to look at yourself and say, I'm the youngest kid here, because that's how he's presented. It's white, black, brown, yellow, male, female. But you're thinking like, how did I get here? How did my life end up that I'm talking to strangers about some of the worst moments of my life? And this is my only real support system. I hear this so often from when I was doing a lot of work with AA and NA was that same theme. You're my family. Fam, it's a family setting. I need family. My family doesn't understand me. You guys get me. I'm a coming being for 30 years. We're doing stuff outside here. We're gonna go, we're gonna go to Mount Charleston, some place in Las Vegas. We're gonna go go bowling. We're gonna do something that's non-alcoholic, non-drug usage. Family, family, family. And you know, it's like he's thinking like there are other addicts like me who are struggling to stay sober and of course the denial. I'm not like them. I don't belong here. I'm better than him. I don't really have a problem. And I wish he would have had the ability to walk into a meeting and say, I'm here because I am an addict and I need help. And I need to open myself up. I wish someone would have taken him by the hand and after hearing these lyrics and said, you know what? You're not going to Chicago. You're going with me to a meeting. That's it. End of story. You need help. And unfortunately, he didn't get the help that he needed. And then, now, three times in the song, you get that chorus. Say they want to read my mind, they really want to read my mind. Telling you right now, all you find is a lost soul, rich and blind. They say you really want to read my mind, you really want to read my mind. I promise all that you'll find is a lost soul, rich and blind, blind. Three times he says this, this, this chorus. Okay, here's the deal. I'm in the studio. I'm listening to the music. And, you know, I know with musicians, sometimes it's like 30, 40, 50 takes to get it right, get the sound up, get the bass, get the background. I get it. You know, all these things have to go into play. But after like his 37th time that he's finally done, and everyone's like, yeah, that's a rap, that's a take. Great job, Jared, right? Everyone's looking at each other like, yeah, man, this is going to be bomb. It's going to be great. Okay. I would look at it and say, to somebody like, is there something wrong here? Like, is anyone picking up on this? Like, these lyrics are scary to me. If I was the kid's father, I'd say like, son, I got to talk to you. I'm worried about you. Are you okay? Are you feeling okay? Is everything all right? Let's go for a walk. My advice to anyone that's watching this video and you have a friend that's suicidal, show some concern and try to communicate. All right? Don't be silent. Speak up. Everyone could be in that room and be oblivious. We're not really care, which is probably a combination. I'm not blaming anybody. I mean, everyone has their focus. I get it. But speak up. Just say to them, you know what? I don't want to give you more drugs. I don't want to do drugs with you. I don't want to buy you drugs. I want to just be your friend. I want to look out for you. I care about you. I felt that he was crying emotionally and no one picked up on it. And one of the commenters said something like, hey, man, when are we going to start listening to the lyrics? And that was like a powerful statement. And that's something I really, really want to follow and push. Don't be afraid to speak up because sometimes your voice is the voice of light in a sea of darkness. Okay, now I want to go right over to the next song, which is, of course, is Legend. So here we go. Again, do the same concept here. I'm going to use specific lyrics that I liked that spoke to me clinically, and then I'm going to break them down. I'm going to say the lyrics, and I'm going to break them down clinically. So here we go. And, oh, just want to add this thing from Rich and Blind. Don't get caught up in the fantasy. And when everyone around, everyone around you is telling you that your behavior and your attitude is fine, then run out the door. That's, that's a bad sign, okay? What a talent he is, and now is lost forever. And I've said it before, find a real friend and get them to center you so that you can catch your bearings, your breath, and ultimately your life. And let me say about communication, I have a producer and he'll sometimes say, Bruce, you should do this, Bruce, you should do that. And I never take the attitude of, who, who are you to talk to me? I'm the talent, I'm the star. 
My attitude always is, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. What you're telling me is it only going to make better for you and for me as we grow. So I, I always want to get feedback. If I could do something better, do something right, I listen. Right now he's telling me, look into the camera. You know, do a better job with that. He's right. He'll say, Bruce, put your hands down because he's right. You know, Bruce, I want you to enunciate this better. He's right. You know, when you get to the point of, oh, Bruce, you're just incredible. <laughs> you're amazing. There's nothing to do wrong. That's when you know you got to check yourself and say, I need, I need a new producer because you're not getting the feedback that you desperately need. And so often these young guys are put in positions where all that around them is yes men and you need somebody to say no. Okay, enough said on that one. We're going to do legends right now. Okay. Again, I'm going to break down specific lyrics and I'm going to break it down clinically the ones that I liked. Okay. goes like this. Uh, in the chorus... Uh, ain't nothing like the feeling of uncertainty, the eeriness of silence. Beautiful lyrics, though. He's, and like so many of these guys, they, they, they have such talent. The feeling of uncertainty, the eeriness of silence. Yeah, because it's gotten very quiet in his head. Yeah, because there's nothing left. It's just him thinking. We're not thinking. The feeling of uncertainty, the eeriness of silence. All around me is this. I'm around 20,000 people, and I feel incredibly alone. A lot of people say that to me, actually. I'm, I'm on top of my field. I'm a professional. I spoke in front of 1,000 people, and I went into my hotel room, and I sobbed for two hours. I felt like I was a nobody. A lot of people say that to me. You think, like, how is that possible? Athletes hit a home run in the bottom of the ninth, and I circled home plate, and I just drove home, and I just stayed at the walls for two days, alone, unhappy. Okay, so, I, you know, like, and the eeriness of silence, I don't like where this is going. Now, he does this. I'm going to break it down, but he says the word legends six times in this song. All legends fall in the making. It's the first one. All legends fall in the making. Yeah, sorry, truth. Uh. Every time he talks about a legend, it's a negative context. Ne negative context. Never positive. He's feeling the pressure at 21 of being a legend. 21, give the guy a break. Now, here's another thing, too. He brings this down. You know, what's a 27 club? We ain't making it past 21. Now, in this song, he sees the world, obviously, is very confusing and dark. You know, how could it not be that for him, and how will fame affect him? That's what the song is trying to bring up. Now, this line has been used, I've seen this line in a million comments. What's a 27 club in verse 1? We ain't making it past 21, okay? The line has been used a lot, and it refers to, obviously, Little Peep and Triple X, okay? And what, what I'm getting from this is that we're going to lower the bar. 27, that's Kurt Cobain time. That's Janis Joplin time. Um, there's plenty of other 27-year-olds, you know? That's nothing big. 27, you know what? We're going to push it. And it's almost like they're running to burn faster and faster to burn out quicker and quicker. Like there's no longevity in the relationship. Amy Winehouse, another one, you know, early, early, early. 27 used to be the ritual. But now I'll be 21 because, hey, man, I'm going to burn so bright that I'm going to literally burn myself out, run faster and faster. To, to take whatever essence I have and just lose it. Okay, now, I'm going through the next line. I'm going through paranoia, so I always got to keep a gun. Instead of being outward and excited, he's become fearful. Like fame has not helped him. It's made him nervous. I'm so nervous about being famous, I got to keep a gun. So I'd be famous then. If that's the case of being famous, I, I, I don't know who's going to come around me. You know what? I'd rather be anonymous. So in his own way, he's telling you how he feels. Now, number two, they tell me I'm, I'm, a, they tell me I'm a legend. Just I don't want that title now. I don't want it, yeah, because I know how I'm going to end up. I know how this is going to end. It's going to end up with me following those other two guys, and I'm not going to be happy. I see where this is going. Number three. Because all the legends seem to die out, what the blank is this about? 
yeah, what the blank is this about? Because I see the future, and why can't I just be me? I'm becoming Juice World. I'm no longer Jared. There's a blur. There's a disconnect, and there's a confusion. I see where this is all going to wind up. Now, here's a line I really wanted to break down. More importantly, I'm trying to change the world. And my point is this. Forget about changing the world. Why is that your problem? You're 21 years old. Enjoy the fact that, you know, you're allowed to vote. You know, you can drink, you know, in moderation. You can enjoy life. You're 21. Your body's bursting with energy. Just change yourself to actually be happy. How about I'm going to change the world? Yeah, I'm going to change myself to get off drugs, to get off any kind of pain pills, to leave behind all my loser friends, who aren't my friends, of course, to find a real group of people that really care about me, to connect with my mom, connect with my brother, and like Jared for who Jared is, not because I have to be somebody to be a goat. You know, I'm a legend. You're, you're 21. Relax. Enjoy being 21. Grow up and mature. Go into this. Grow into this. Learn to savor life as a full meal and not as one gulp. Okay? You know, the hype and pressure that's put on young rappers today is insane. Who could handle it? I know that at his age, at 21, I don't know, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. So I can only imagine what it's like to be famous in his level and for thousands of people and you're signed to huge deals, the pressure, the pressure. Who in all, is in, in all that entourage was looking out for Jared? That's my point. Now, here we go. Number four, all legends fall in the making. Yeah, sorry, truth, huh? What he's realizing, you can never live up to the hype that's put on you. You're the greatest of all time. You're amazing. You're the new face of rap. You're the new face of emo rap. You're incredible, Jared. You're Juice World. You're not Jared anymore. Like, blink, blink, who am I today? What am I supposed to be today? I'm a savior. I'm the Messiah. How about just being me? How about let me just hang out and be 21 and enjoy the success I've achieved? Couldn't even do that. Now, here he goes, number five. In verse two, we keep on losing our legends too. Yeah, we keep on losing them. We can't even hang on to them. They come and they go. They come and they go. Now, here's another point here. In the chorus, you get this. I'm sorry. Number six, the final time. All legends fall in the making. Yeah, sorry, truth. Uh. What he's really saying to me is sorry to be real. Because being a legend is really starting to overwhelm me. How do I take off that title? I got so who so the next nineteen year old is he's the next legend the next eighteen year old it's like a gunslinger in the old west you know you got to always take on the challenger I heard you're the fastest gun in this territory Bruce so you know what let's see what you got so you got to take away the new rival you got to blow him away and it's always that one time that young kid coming up that Billy the kid that's going to take you out because now he's the next legend he's the next legend. I would be comfortable in your own skin for once. No, no, no. I heard you're the fastest gun. You know, no one can draw like you, Bruce. Let's put him up. And you got to kill, and you got to kill, and you got to survive to be the next legend, the legend, the legend. Okay. Now, three times he says the line, dying young. Okay. Dying young is pretty clear to me. You have to listen to what the person is saying. This is what he's internalizing in his head, that that's his reality. That's how he sees things. I'm dying young. Okay. People who have addiction issues, people say, how do you think like that? For them, this is normal thinking. Okay. Let me check out early. It becomes acceptable, normal, appropriate, the right thing to do. I, I've looked at all my options. That's your best option. For them, unfortunately, it is. Okay. And you begin to think in these perspectives, all right? So I wanted to break down this song, not that dissimilar from the first song, okay? Rich and Blind. I want to close with this. All I got from this song for me on Legends, it's a great song. The songs are great. It's not an issue. 
I just felt his pain and his unhappiness. That's what I got. The line that I read was sorry truth. The last line, sorry truth, in one of the lyrics, sorry truth, uh, sorry truth, okay? And you know what that says to me when he says that? I just can't deal with that right now. Sorry truth. Like it's almost like a viable, visible object. Like it's a, it's a thing. It's an entity. The truth is an entity. And I can't deal with your truth right now. I can't deal with it. That I messed up. Okay? I just can't deal with the truth right now. And that's why I got to hide myself in a sea of drugs and confusion. Find your crew that will look out for you. Not people that are only there because you're famous. Okay? Find your happiness. Find your sweet spot and don't get caught up in all the hype and unreality. Don't compare yourself to others. Never do that. Just be you for you. There's the one last uh, thing I want to bring up. Vic Mensa said that rap needs to stop glorifying drugs as kids take what people say seriously. Yeah, they do. Okay? They take, they take what you say for real. Let's listen. You know, think about how we present ourselves, how we present ourselves to others, and how we present ourselves to an audience space that's groping with problems of their own. When you find yourself with happiness, that's what you're going to radiate to others around you. You're going to have a much more satisfying life, a much more satisfying career. And guess what? You'll learn to enjoy it for what it is. And you're talented. And when you're happy, when you're successful, that's what I want you to think about. Let me know how you feel about this video, about the concept of like trying to put on several different masks and different faces. What has that gotten you? We've all done it in the past to try and fit in, to be cool, you know, to be hip, to be wanted, to be part of the crowd, you know, to be something that we're, that we're not. And tell me about those experiences and what have you learned from that and where you are now in your life. Once again, thank you so much for watching. This is Bruce Moffson, Sunridge of Nevada. Appreciate it.